So everybody who believes Brian Kohlberger is guilty of these crimes, let me know what you believe the motive is down below. And if you want me to believe he committed these crimes, then you're going to have to come up with a whole lot better motives than what's out there on the internet. Because I believe the motive, if he did it, was simply for educational purposes. And if you think that's crazy, I think I can prove it. And if an open conversation is something you prefer, then this is the place for you. Welcome to the point. So let's talk about it. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Because nobody knows why. And the reason I think it happened is because he wanted to. That's what he wanted to do. He wanted to commit. So in terms of opportunity, means, and motive, he just wanted to has been a statement that hasn't quite sat well with me. And to be honest, a lot of people who are on the fence with this case or believe he's innocent altogether, they're not buying this either. Nobody is really buying the he just wanted to philosophy. But in an effort to better understand why a lot of people do think he is guilty, I have found the most common motives, and they don't seem to line up either. That being A, this was a thrill unaliving, which they are then trying to say Brian Kohlberger is an individual who craves the euphoric adrenaline rush provided by stalking, capturing, and committing this act. They're also implying that he is attempting to commit the perfect crime and he's a narcissist. The other motive out there is a budding SK. He did have an obsession with other SKs, but that would also imply that he had some sort of ritual or pattern and he would have had to have committed at least two other events for this to qualify. And the most frequent one that bounces around the internet is this incel motive angle, which they are then implying he could not form any long-term relationships and he would have had a need for recognition and some sort of moral elitism, but most importantly, a lack of empathy. Now, if you do believe one of those three motives are the most likely, please let me know down in the comments below. But if you go back and listen to and read the interviews given from people who knew him both recently and in the past, you will find that what they generally say about his character isn't quite lining up with any of these motives. Now, starting with this thrill unalive motive, we aren't aware of any scenario in his past where he has committed some sort of stalking event or capturing event. There was that one report that was not verified by anybody, another one of these anonymous sources, that said he had broke into another female's apartment or dorm, rearranged the furniture around so she would come to him for help. But that has not been proven by anything that I've read. So where is this inclination to stalk? Unless you're trying to say this was the very first time, and that just doesn't seem likely to me. And if he was a budding SK or an incel, then you would also believe that he lacks sympathy, that he doesn't care for others, that he has a perception that he is above individuals and wasting his time when dealing with other people. But you have that story in 2018, while he was a security guard in PA, he's credited with saving a woman's life. Now, if he is saving a woman's life, how is he an incel? And how is he lacking empathy? That seems to completely contradict all three of those particular motives. Not to mention his former professor at DeSales had stated he was one of her brightest students. And she was one of the few students that she recommended to go pursue a doctorate in this particular field. Now, one of his former classmates from DeSales said he was a friendly guy and that he was nice. The guy that uh, he was running with at WSU said he was shocked, just completely shocked, which would mean at no point in time during their interactions he had displayed any emotional indicators of being a thrill unaliver, a budding SK, or an incel. 
A former co-worker of his gave an interview and said he was a weird guy. He was socially awkward, but he was nice. He didn't come from a bad family. He wasn't a bad kid. We are all aware of the substance problem in the past, but we have no indications to believe that he was currently using at the time of this incident. And as far as I'm aware, if you're an incel, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you can't get a date whatsoever. You can barely get a woman to talk to you, but he's going on tender dates. We've had reports that there were females coming in and out of his apartment, and the woman on the interview that he went on the date with on Tinder said it was a normal date and it wasn't till they got alone that he seemed to get a little handsy. And that might have been just a misjudgment on cues because she did invite him up ultimately. Now she had made some phrasing that he was being kind of pushy, but she still had the power to say no. She still had that authority. And let's also mention that when she didn't want anything to do with him and went to the bathroom to fake an illness, he left without incident. The police were not called. And we have seen countless pictures of him surrounded by women, and he seemed completely comfortable. So if his former teacher is speaking highly of him, and most of his friends are saying he might be a little weird, but he was highly intelligent, he was nice, hey, he saved a woman's life in 2018, then how could he fit into any three of these motives? Let me know down in the comments below. But there is a motive that isn't being talked about. And maybe it's because I'm just reading way too deep into this thing, trying to better understand what's going on due to the lack of information. But for me, the only logical motive here, and you can let me know down in the comments below if you disagree, but this was an experiment. This was, in his mind, for educational purposes. If he did it, the only viable reason I can see right now is he did it for educational purposes. Now let's go back to his master's degree. Okay, his master's thesis was on script theory, meaning he was trying to analyze the processes individuals go through mentally and physically to commit a crime. He wanted to know how they felt. He wanted to know why they chose their target. He wanted to know how they felt during the time of the incident, before, after, what they were thinking when they were trying to get away. He wanted to analyze and write a thesis on the whole process and apparently did pretty good on it. But people saying, well, he was obsessed with SKs and that was weird to them. You have to understand, it seems to me he was obsessed with this field. And before you say I'm crazy or wrong, understand people in the scientific community have went well beyond the limitations of the law before. You had scientists back in the mid to late 90s roughly conducting genetic experiments that ended up going to jail. You've had people studying viruses that were way outside what is legal who are now serving time in jail. There's been scientists who have been given vaccines in the past to individuals that haven't passed an FDA study. And even look at the professional athletes. They quite frequently go to other countries to have procedures performed on them that are not approved, not necessarily regulated, and then they return back to the States to heal up and get ready for the next season. So this is not something that is out of the realm of possible, and this is not something that is unheard of. And let's also understand he was going to have to write his doctoral dissertation. Now this is a big deal, everybody. It is a big deal. This dissertation is published. It is reviewed. It is made public. And if you don't think somebody who is obsessed over criminology like Brian Kohlberger was stressing about this thing, then you don't have a clue what's going on at all. It is completely viable that his doctoral dissertation was going to be on the behavior patterns of committed unalivers. And it is also possible that he dove so deep into this thing that he wanted to write a paper with actual first-hand knowledge. And if you think I'm wrong, let me know down in the comments below. But we already know he was heavily invested into this field. We already know he had spent significant time before coming into this field being interested in it. And he was known to be a strict grader to all genders not just female, both male and female, and we know he took this field seriously. 
He was heavily invested in it. And it is quite possible if he did it, his motive was to understand better the psychological processes an individual goes through when they commit a crime. Now, if you think about it, statistically speaking, most crimes are committed by who? They're committed by somebody who knows the victim. And it couldn't have been strictly a stalking situation because in my own opinion, he picked the absolute worst time to stalk somebody and commit and act like this. He literally went into a home when it was at its fullest occupancy. And if you're telling me there was 12 pings or so going around the home and that he had been watching it and he had been monitoring the movements, then he would have known Kayla Gonzalez was out of the house and he would have known she was back, and he would have known when Ethan was in or out of the house, or when all the other roommates were out of the house. It was said in that 48-hour story that Maddie was the target. And in terms of stalking, this is the worst time to stalk somebody and commit an act like this. So it couldn't have been that this was a thrill unaliving. There was no rush from this, and any part of planning that would have went on would have had to gone on in his process to better understand the mind of an unaliver. I know it sounds crazy. I know it's not necessarily heard of, but would that not sound a more viable than any of these other ones? I mean, if y'all are telling me he did this, but he did it because he was stalking Maddie, this is a horrible time to commit that crime. There has got to be countless other opportunities where this could have went down if Maddie was his target. And if he was an incel, wouldn't he have graded papers differently for men than women? And wouldn't he have had an attitude with his former professor? And wouldn't he have gotten an attitude with the officer that gave him the traffic citation? I mean, everybody in his past has said he was a nice guy. He was a little weird. He was socially awkward, very smart. And for the most part, besides that one small incident with the girl on Tinder and there was a story about a friend of his where they got in a physical altercation or he was getting a little aggressive with him and they separated, other than that, there's not a whole lot going on that indicate behavioral violence of any type. So what other motive would it be? Nobody just randomly throws their life away for no reason. Nobody just randomly throws their life away after they get it turned around for no reason. So him just wanting to do this is not going to process with me. It is not going to be okay. So having this done for educational purposes or scientific reasons, however a mind like that would do it, has to be the only viable motive out there. And if you disagree, let me know down in the comments below. I'm not swearing up and down I'm right. And if you know of a better motive, please let me know and I'll look into it. But other than that, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you being here. Y'all stay safe and I'll catch you in the next one.